Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and um, we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season five, this episode 11 is called Troop Salt Lake City. And before we get started, let me just apologize right away. As you can probably tell from the look of my nose, I am definitely under the weather right now. Uh, my allergies, I'm hoping they're my allergies, they feel like they're my allergies, but Needless to say, they're kicking my butt, and we're going to try to get through this um, review the best as possible. Also, too, I also did just get done watching the show, so um, I definitely did cry, so there's that. Um, anyway, without further ado, let's get into the review. So, um, the episode starts right where, um, well, it actually starts where we have Whitney and Heather, Girl Scout. Um, they're playing for this, like, Girl Scout event, um, and... Um, really trying to resolve some of the issues that took place at Mary's house after that event. And while this is happening, we have um, Meredith recapping what happened. Because they talk about Meredith and what happened um, with um, her leaving and um, trying to get that resolved. And really because Whitney also kind of feels away now with uh, Meredith yet again because of the snatching of the phone and whatnot. Um, they're not sure how that's going to go. And then um, Whitney gives, like, commends um, Heather for move finally moving on from the Bronwyn situation. But, Bron but of course, Heather and her confessional still being delusional about the whole entire thing. She's saying that... Um, that Bronwyn is just can't be trusted, this, that, and this, and uh, and Bronwyn, ah, uh, honey, this episode, you kind of prove Heather to be slightly right, and I don't like that. Um, I don't think she's completely right. I don't think she, because she is dramatic when it comes to things, but I don't, she, she wasn't completely wrong when it came to things, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, but needless to say, it's nice that she moved on because at the end of the day, the th whatever Brahma's relationship when it comes to people has nothing to do with her. So at the end of the day, it's really none of her business. And I think that's the reason why I was annoyed by the situation because she's making things that has nothing to do with her or her business. And also... Really, Bronwyn is doing the same thing everyone else is. She's basically doing the same thing that Heather's doing, but she only just does. She just does it better. And she kind of did it again. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of scared if they were to get on the right page now that I think about it. If Whitney, Bronwyn, and Heather were to get, in this, get on the same page, it would be a way more organized version of bad weather. But... I think the difference is Bronwyn doesn't need a sidekick or two people to get this done. She could just probably do it herself. She really wanted to be that kind of person. But anyway, neither here nor there. Let's move on. Next, we see Meredith. She's at the art gallery. And we find out she invited Mary to meet her there in Park City um, to kind of patch things up. And the reason why I mention this is because we find out both in the episode when she, um when things happen later on and in the after show, why this is a point, uh, kind of a, um, a contentious point of where they're meeting at. So as this is happening, Mary's getting ready, trying to leave, but she's also trying to check up on her son. And as you know, Mer there's issues going on with Meredith's son, not Meredith, wow, Mary's son. So she's checking up on him, trying to like talk to him. And who knows how long that, that was going on, but he wasn't there. And so she finally goes and leaves. And um, the problem is Mary did not show up until an hour later after she should have been there to meet Meredith. Um, and so Meredith was offended immediately because she waited for her for over an hour and then also, Meredith still is being a victim when it comes to the whole entire thing. And I actually, the only thing that I see that I'm on the side with Meredith when it comes to certain thing 
is just the one thing and one thing only is that she was late. Um, honestly, if I would have been married, I would have just, even though her and Meredith weren't cool, I would have called Meredith like, look, this is not a good time for me to talk to you right now. I don't really want to talk to you right now. Um, I have some things going on. Without saying what it is, just say you have some family issues going on and leave it there. Um, it probably will resolve things there. But at the same time, I kind of also get Mary's perspective. You're the one who offended me. So why am I calling you? So that's kind of parts of the problem is because Mary is the one who's actually felt offended, which she should have felt offended because Meredith excused herself out of the door. She did not get kicked out. And Meredith keeps trying to spin the narrative and say that she got kicked out of Mary's house when that's not what happened. And it's kind of messed up. And Meredith, I'm just going to say it straight up. It's not even just really this episode. It's been going on for a while now. You are a Karen. I cannot. I do not. I can't. You're a Karen. You're a Karen. I'm just going to say it. Especially how you handle things this episode. And honestly, I know because she didn't know what was going on, but the thing at the end of the day is if you claim Mary was so much of your friend and you expected all these things from her, this, that, and this, and that, then you would probably, you would have known that there was something going on with Mary. Cause at this point, I feel like Angie has an idea something's going on, but she doesn't know what it is yet. And Bronwyn definitely has an idea that there's something going on, but she doesn't know yet because Bronwyn showed up, you know, at Mary's house after Mary just got done talking to her son and the wife and was, you know, Mary was clearly not with it, you know, not good. And so I think those two are the ones who probably really know what's kind of have an idea what's going on. But at this point, no one else knows what's going on on the show yet other than us as the viewers. Cause you know, the show and Anyway, she does show up, though, and things go left immediately. Like, uh, Meredith is just basically thinking that Mary has been using her throughout the years in the show. And let me be honest. I am part of the cult of Mary, <laughs> a.k.a. I watch the show really because Mary's on the show. If Mary is not on the show, I'm not watching the show. I did not watch the season that Mary wasn't on the show. I don't remember what season that was. I didn't really watch it, though. Like, I have no interest or care about the show if Mary's not on the show. I'm keeping it all the way real. And I almost stopped watching the show after they had that lady do what they did to Mary. So, and also, too, I have some thoughts, but we'll, 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 I'll get to it. Because... Meredith says something on the after show. Because, by the way, I did watch the after show, too. So, similar to my other review, we're going to kind of hop back and forth between what happened on the show and then the context of the after show. I say Beverly Hills does it a little bit better than Salt Lake, but we're going to do that. But, anyway. But, Meredith, as so, because Mary ends up leaving. Because she's like, look. If you feel a certain way and you're not going to apologize and you aren't, and you don't think what you did was wrong as far as doing what you do, I'm out. And this came up more than once, so I might be mixing the conversations because the conversation they had the one tried to do the one-on-one -on -one conversation at the museum. And <laughs> side note, there's zero. I know y'all hardly ever see that man, but he's here too. Whispers, of course, here per usual. Both the cats have made the appearance. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Mary just feels a way that, I mean, honestly, I think Mary is in all, has very valid feelings about how she feels about Meredith because Meredith, I guess she really found out that this season Meredith is a surface friend and isn't really her friend. And in the after show, they kind of get way more into it of like the years of them knowing each other. And how, from Mary's perspective, she's felt like this one-sided. Um, but then Meredith, from her perspective, and, and this is where I'm like, dang, Meredith kind of has a point. Because the ladies on the show did try to ice Mary out. But it wasn't really they were trying to ice Mary out. Mary was kind of icing herself out because she didn't really fool with half these women. Um, 
And Meredith would make sure she would, you know, basically hang out with her so that she would get time on the show, really. And so Meredith feels like, so Meredith's anger really is, and they're not talking about it on the actual show, but what really is based off the after show is that Meredith feels used. She feels like Mary used her to stay on the show. And Meredith, you don't have a storyline. You haven't had a storyline in sight since season one. And also, Mary is the reason why the show even came to be. Like the producers and the people who created the show met Mary and wanted to do a show surrounded based off of Mary's life. I hope, I don't know if y'all knew that, but like that is a thing. Like Mary is like, um, she's she's the show. Okay, she is the show, even though she's not always on the show. That's why she's the only housewife that was able to skip a reunion and still come back. No other housewife has ever been able to do that, do that before because they know we're, we're not watching that show without Mary. I'm sorry. I'm not watching this show without Mary. <laughs> Let's be all the way real. So, yes, she might have... I mean, really... Using each other on the sh they use each other. Let's be real. They use each other. That's what happened there. But Meredith, that's not worth you being as angry as you are. And that's my problem with Meredith. She puts so much stake in being angry over things that don't really matter. While unbeknownst to you, Mary behind the scenes is going through it because her her um, son is struggling with issues and she don't know what it is yet. Because at this point, Mary didn't know what was going on all the way yet. So like. I just hope at the reunion, Meredith, girl, I hope you get eaten up. And hopefully you are getting eaten up in social media by the way you're behaving because you are making a molehill out. You're making a mountain out. You're making a molehill out of a mountain. Wait, a mountain? You're making a mountain. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. That's what we meant. Sorry, I reversed it. And Mary... She doesn't have time for the fakery. And that's what she basically just said. And that's the reason why Meredith isn't part of her circle anymore. She's like, look, you didn't even check up on me. You don't even know what's really going on with me. If we were close and we were really friends, you would know these things. But you don't know anything about that. So there it is. But anyway, that's where they left it. They were not good. And I don't see it them coming back, being honest. And for those who don't know, for side note. If you are someone who loves Meredith Marks, this probably is not the review for you. I'm about to keep it all the way real because Meredith has been floating throughout the seasons with no storyline and just some random one-liners here and there. And honestly, half the OGs on this show don't have a storyline. So I'm going to need them to take their audacity and leave it at the door because that's where I'm just kind of like, look. Y'all, Meredith's not even needed. And she wasn't even needed in this episode for real also. I know they made it where she was needed, but child, they made it. That's the problem. They produced for her to be needed. And I would kind of say the same thing about Heather, but we'll get to her on that. Because you know, I always got whack Heather one time. But anyway, so then next we do see that um, Lisa and Henry, they actually meet up with Angie and Electra at the um, aquarium. And, oh, side note. So, because I'm not going to go over Meredith and Mary um, going um, going back and forth with each other again, because it is going to happen again this episode. But what Mary also pointed out, she pointed out in the after show, is Mary lives in Salt Lake City. She actually lives in Salt Lake City, while Meredith lives in Park City. So, it's an hour one-way drive to get there back and forth. So, it's just always going to be a hassle for her to get all the way over there. And it sounds like whenever they're meeting up, Meredith is always the one who's inviting her to Park City versus them actually meeting somewhere in the middle or the meeting at Salt, at Salt Lake City. So that kind of tells a story about the one-sidedness right then and there too. Why does Mary always have to go to where you're at? That's just kind of how I feel about that too. And at the end of the day, we kind of already knew as viewers, their friendship was very surface and it just kind of, that's why it didn't last because it'll surface. But anyway, 
Moving on. So back to this. Um, Lisa's actually the one who invited um, Angie to for um, basically Henry and Electra to meet up at the um, aquarium. They um, pet a snake and then the kids went and did their thing while Lisa and um, Angie cleared the air. So this was probably the first time I've ever seen Lisa actually be vulnerable and not use her bass in her voice and everything else. And the other difference was Lisa actually listened to um, Angie. Um, now, it seems like based off the after show, they're still in a good place. But I don't know because I don't follow them on social media. So they might be jabbing back and forth. But who knows? Um but they both just decided we've been friends for each, with each other for too long and we're not going to let the other ladies on the show basically divide us anymore. And um, the thing is, though, see, the thing is, <laughs> Angie was never the one who was guilty of doing this. It was Lisa who was guilty of doing that the whole entire time. So Lisa saying this to Angie... I find that interesting because it's like, but Angie was never the one who was doing that to begin with. And for, but what was telling and what was revealed is that, so Lisa says that she doesn't, that she doesn't have a problem with Angie being friends with Whitney, but she does. That's all it is. That's really all it is. She actually really does because she wants, um, the wording and everything that she said to Angie about how she felt she felt like she wasn't heard, this, that, and this, and uh, it was super hypocritical because <laughs> she literally verbatim said what Bronwyn said to Lisa about how Lisa was treating her. And I'm like, and you couldn't see how so we'll see how long that lasts this is like my only thing and i'm just kind of like i don't know if i believe that lisa really feels like she did anything wrong because one thing i noticed when it comes to lisa is it almost feels like she never feels like she's done anything wrong and angie i really wish i want you to stop being such a pushover i know you're trying to not do that but you still revert back um, and we kind of get context to why. So we, um, Angie did explain like, look, when there's conflict going on, so when you're going back and forth with Whitney, I know you want me to have your back more, but like, honestly, when it comes to conflict, I literally treat it similar to how I've treated growing up. And she shares what's going on with her mom, like what went on with her mom growing up with her mom dealing with substance abuse issues and whatnot. And so she's like, so I just withdraw instead of like being there trying to like, I, so instead of fight, she flights basically. Um, well, she doesn't even flight. She freezes. She freezes. Um, so that's kind of what happens when it comes to conflict, which is it actually checks out. It makes sense because Angie on this show and throughout this show, um, she kind of did come off, especially at the beginning as a people pleaser. Um, she really only stands up for herself once things hit the fan, but then she goes all the way to hell with it every time she does. And it's definitely telling. It shows a pattern of this is probably how she's dealt with conflict all her life. And Angie, don't take this the wrong way. I love you on the show, but I hopefully, especially now that you're realizing the issues that, you know, you've had with your mom and whatnot growing up is now reeling its, rearing its ugly head. I'm hoping you're going to therapy to handle that because you go from good to not good kind of quickly. Um, I've, 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 at least it seems like it's a thing because at least when it comes to her clapbacks, it kind of comes out nowhere. Her clapbacks be a little bit like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's entertaining, but... I can imagine that's from the other lady's perspective. They're like, where did that come from? You know what I mean? But I'm noticing that's probably something 
maybe we'll maybe that'll be something we'll be visit more on the show. But anyway, long story less long. Angie and Lisa patch things up. So next we have Mary um, kind of opening up about how Robert Jr. She just still she's she's going through it. This like and I don't think Meredith and this is the reason why I'm so mad at Meredith is because if she was just not self-absorbed and really realized that that party that Mary did, it was not about the party. It was about the distraction. And so the fact that the distraction got ruined by her antics when she's going through some real life ish right now, it is getting at her. And I could, that's really what it is, you know? And, but Meredith is just too self-absorbed to know that there is something going on. And this is the other thing too, what kind of bothers me because when Meredith was talking to her kids over the phone, waiting for like Mary, she did feel like maybe there's something going on. So, and that's what bothers me. So you kind of have an idea that maybe there might be something going on based off of you talking to your kids because she's an hour late and she's acting, she's not acting like herself according to you. But then yet you didn't give her any grace when she showed up and went all in on victim. So this is why I can't with Meredith. And like, this is why I was just so, I was done with her this episode. And I almost did speak through her whole entire like scene. But I'm glad I didn't because I did catch some things later on. But that happens a little bit later on. Anyway. So Mary's getting ready for the event. And the event is the Girl Scout event. And then we see that um, we have Heather and Whitney. They're getting set up. And it turns out that they're basing this off of Troop Beverly Hills. And um, so it's a Girl Scout theme thing. But it's also... I guess they have um, this go this type of camp for Mormons. I don't know nothing about that. They kind of went into it a little bit, but not really. It, it's also not that important. So anyway, <clears throat> we see that Bronwyn, Lisa, and Meredith, they're in the car on the way to the event. And they're just talking, you know, small talking about, like, have they ever went to the, the, the camp before? And... Um, Lisa's the only one that's when she went for one day and she just didn't like it. And then Meredith and Bronwyn never went. And that's kind of, it, it kind of actually makes sense that they wouldn't have went. Um, and then we have Angie and um, Mary. They're in the car and they're talking about Meredith. And, you know, Mary just basically states what happened. She's like, look, yeah, we're not good. And um, hopefully she just, you know, stays away from me. I don't want, I don't want to start any problems with her, but like, I just, you know, the friendship's one-sided. And I believe it. It does come off as a one-sided friendship. Because in the after show, Mary does state some other things that's occurred behind the scenes that surface-wise, as viewers, we feel like Mary is using Meredith. But then there are other things that were happening where they were they literally were using each other to a certain degree. Like because that that season that um because they talked a lot about i think it was season two it was season two i think it was a, it was a season where um jen, jen shaw um uh, um feds raid happened and they were in a sprinter van it was that season um and meredith didn't really like the ladies because of Really, Whitney was spinning some things, doing some things. Because um, <laughs> it actually does come up later on about how Whitney's actually the villain of the show, which, yeah. Um, there's multiple villains in the show, but anyway. But um, because Meredith was kind of having a rough season because her dad passed away, um, she used, and I think also Meredith kind of did not want to hang out with Jen Shaw too much because of what was happening. Um, so they're using each other to kind of not have to film with the others and just film with each other. So that's kind of like how I just feel like, girl, like Meredith's excuse doesn't check because they were using each other. And Mary, to me, her, what she's talking about is a little bit more valid to me. But that's just my thoughts. And maybe I'm a little biased. Maybe. But anyway, so then the other car, 
Meredith and Lisa are talking about Mary and what happened. And Meredith and Lisa are both stating that Mary kicked her out, which is not what happened. And I love that Bronwyn stayed out of it. She's like, nope, I am not. Mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. And I know why, because she don't want no one. She, she does not want one with Mary. She doesn't. Um, <laughs> but anyway. And so while this is happening, Angie is like, yeah, Meredith was just being very self-absorbed about the whole entire situation. She's all, honestly a lot like Lisa, by the way. And I don't know if y'all didn't know this, but y'all know that Mary does not like Lisa. That's why whenever they're going back and forth, which, <laughs> except for this time, that's coming up. In general, whenever Mary and Lisa are going back and forth, Mary will not even engage with Lisa because she doesn't think that Lisa's worth the time. She doesn't even respect Lisa enough to give her that kind of time, typically. Um, but she at least had some respect for Meredith, and even to a certain degree, she has some respect for um, Whitney. Anyway. But... Um, so then the other conversation happens on the way there talking about how um, Bronwyn asks, like, so how do you feel about getting the invite by Whitney and um, Heather? And Meredith's like, well, I, I found it weird that Whitney invited me. And, um, you know, Brown was like, well, I found it weird that, you know, Heather invited me, but here we are. But I just also find it weird that they're, you know, doing the party together because Whitney's been talking a lot about um, Heather and not in a good way. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> I was like, Bronwyn, wrong road. Wrong road. And this is her being, she, she's, she's doing it too much now. I don't know why she felt the need to do this, but then she did it. And I was like, okay, because you know this is going to come up later on. Anyway, so then fast forward, they're all there. They're getting there. And Melly, who we haven't seen since, I don't know, since they're in Milwaukee. I honestly thought they left her in Milwaukee. We ain't seen her since. She makes an appearance. But like she literally is walking through and that's it. She might as well just be an extra on this show. The sad thing is, the person that we don't want to see has been on the show and been talked about and everything more than her. And that is not a snowflake holder and not a woman. But we'll get to that anyway. So they're there at the event and child, Brittany, is, Brittany has this picture with Donnie and they show that. She basically went to the Vegas Osmond show with Jared. So, yes, Jared, that's what I was alluding to. See, you like that segue? Yeah, Jared has been on the show more than Melly has been on the show. <laughs> you might as well make him a friend of Jesus Christ because he, he, he wants it. Um, he really wants that snowflake very badly. Anyway, so apparently they're back together now. And, um, uh, so then as they're talking about it, um, they're just like, wait, so are y'all back together? And Wendy's like, I don't, Brittany's like, I don't know. Oh, it's just like a hamster wheel. I can't get off of it. I don't know. But then she also states like, yeah, so when we were broke out, you know, I don't care what he does when we're broken up because like, when we were broken up, I was dating like 10 men. And now I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> because. Oh, God. This is like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah, I was. And then um, I think it was, I forgot who asked, but someone's like, so was this like BYU style? And I didn't know what that meant. And child, they went to the Mormonism of it all. And I can't believe this is real life. The things that y'all do to make it so it's not sex. If you have to think that hard to not have sex, then either just don't do it or have the sex. Jesus Christ. I did not know this was a thing. 
And apparently it's a thing. And sorry if you're a Mormon, you're watching this. I don't know how you are, but if you are, welcome. Everyone's welcome. No judgment or whatever. But I am judging this because it sounds weird to me because I'm just not, I don't understand how, what are we doing here? So <laughs> Heather proceeds to start describing how, um, I forgot what the term they even used was, but basically a hot dog in a bun. I have the bun. You, you you do with that what you will. And then a man has a hot dog. And as long as the hot dog stays in the bun and that's it, it's not sex. And the producers even asked this too, like, so how does that, how is that not sex? And then Heather goes in detail, like, I don't know, you're just going to ask the good Lord when you see him. But like, if there's no shaking or rattling, I mean, if there's no hump, if there's no thrusting, if there's no humping, and if there's no orgasm, that means you go off and you're, and you're well. You didn't have sex. I want to say something so bad. But we're not going to. <laughs> And apparently Heather basically confessed, yes, this is how, I did this a lot in college. I was like, anyway, so um, Brittany's still talking about the, the, the thing. And <laughs> Mary is the rest of us. She's like, I am bored. Let's talk about something else. I was like, thank God. And so then that's when um, um, they chime. So that's when um, Heather chimes in. She's like, okay, so we're going to do this potato sack race. It's like Team Heather and Team Whitney. And <clears throat> Team Heather won. And I don't even remember who's all in it. But child, let's get to the mess because that's what we're here for, the mess, right? Um, so they're having the lunch. And Brittany and Angie start talking, going back and forth a little bit, but not really. Because Angie's just trying to understand, like, look, are you Mormon still or are you not? She's like, and Brittany's like, yes, I still am a practicing Mormon. She's like, well, I'm confused. You're giving me mixed messages. So I thought I, because she's like, in my, in my religion, you know, because I'm Greek Orthodox, you know, and, and then basically in most traditional Christianity, it is not a crime to drink. And if anything... Most of us are drinkers. Um, <laughs> Catholic and Lutherans, and I was I was raised a Lutheran, so we drink over over at our side of the house, okay? And we have. And so anyway, um, so she was like, I honestly did not know. I did not know if you were a practicing Mormon or not. Like I figured, you you know, you could be Mormon two point I don't know. And so Brittany, and so what Brittany's still just kind of perplexed, like, okay, but I, I still don't understand why you thought that was a good idea to bring that. She said, well, what's also confusing to me is you send me a text later on thanking me for the wine and saying that you enjoy, enjoy the wine. So if you didn't want it, you wouldn't have taken it. And then you brought it up. And like, you basically, put, basically, Angie is saying what all of us were thinking. If it was a big deal, you wouldn't have blown up your own spot. You would have just taken the wine and then regifted to someone else. If you're really about that, not more like being a Mormon, you wouldn't have made it like you wouldn't have been so offended. And so <clears throat> Angie, and so as she's saying this, um, Mary's like, yeah, it's kind of two-faced. And then um, Lisa's like, that's not two-faced. She's like, no, it is. It's two-faced. It's, it's still a form of being two-faced. Like, it is. And then um, Meredith, no, sorry, not Lisa. Meredith, Chime, and Child, they're the same to me. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> you can tell I am so just not here for Meredith at all um, after what happened last week. But anyway, so <clears throat> Meredith's like, no, she just felt like it. Meredith is speaking a certain way because she's actually speaking about, about herself, really, about she just felt hurt that this happened this way and she wanted to express it. What's wrong with that? And Mary's like, well, that's just two face it. Like you could just say it with your chest, say it and mean it. And then right then and there, we see that Meredith and Mary get right back into it. And, um, yeah, it's the whole thing. And then 
Um, as they're going back and forth, um, Lisa chimes in and Le then it goes to Lisa and Mary going back and forth. And this, this should have been paused for everyone because the fact that Mary and Lisa are going back and forth and Mary never entertains Lisa, that should have been telling something's off with Mary. Um, but because these women are so self-absorbed, they're not, they don't get it. They don't know. So basically Mary, so now it's Mary and Lisa going back and forth instead of Meredith and Mary. And they're going back and forth and Mary is just getting her together. And it's like, you are a freaking liar. I don't respect anything that comes out of your mouth. She's just going off on her. And then Brittany tried to chime and she's like, <laughs> she shut her down immediately expeditiously. And she went on mute, mute challenge. She didn't even try it again. Um, and then um, <clears throat> Lisa's like, I just want you to keep talking. I want you to keep talking so you can just expose how you are. And she's like, I am going to keep talking. And what? And she's like, and honestly, and then she just went to hell with her. And it was like, oh my God. And then it got to the point where Mary did blew the whistle. Because that was the only way they are going to stop. Because Mary was wound up all the way up and then in the confessional mary confesses she's like look i am going through a lot right now and she's crying in her confessional she's like i'm going through a lot right now when it comes to like my situation with my son and honestly i'm on edge anyone basically anyone could get it if you anyone could get it and you could tell that's the kind of time she was on and it was not good and so um, I think it was Brit Whitney and um, Heather were just like, okay, let's take a time out. Let's take a pause. Let's do this, then this, and uh, and child, that didn't last long because as this is happening, then um, basically Lisa, um, oh, Meredith, um, oh, now, sorry, I was trying to figure out what happened here. So Bronwyn then states like, well, I'm just kind of surprised all this is happening the way it's happening because people have not been honest with each other. And then this is what Bronwyn basically shares what she said. Um, oh, Lisa brings it up. Like Lisa's like, yeah, Whitney, this is all you're doing, this and this and that. And so it goes from Lisa versus Mary to Lisa versus Whitney and Whitney's like, what are we, no, what's going on? And then that's when Bronwyn comes in and she's like, yeah, you said a certain thing about her, said a certain thing about Heather, you have not been truthful. And Whitney, to our surprise, she literally said exactly what she said and it really wasn't that bad. Bronwyn put stank on it. Bronwyn basically did a Heather, but she got called out and called and called for it right away. And then she tried to do it again, Bronwyn, to Angie, and Angie, and with the Angie and Lisa thing, but uh, Bronwyn was kind of right. <laughs> she wasn't really wrong. Bronwyn was not really wrong when it came to this, this version of it. Um, and so um, basically Bronwyn and Angie are going back and forth and um, Bronwyn has a, has a formidable opponent when it comes to um, Angie. I didn't, I didn't see this coming by the way, because I thought she was on the same side. But I was like, girl, you're burning your bridges because in the confessional, Whitney's like, I'm just surprised that Bronwyn would do that. Because she thought that she said what she said in confidence and it really wasn't even that. And the side note is what Whitney said wasn't even that bad. Like that's something that Whitney has been saying for years on the show that she doesn't like. Because Whitney and Lisa are the same. They're kind of the same. And, and actually, um, uh, Mary says it in the after show that them two are a lot alike. They don't like, although they're saying you're cool, you can be friends with who you be friends with. They don't really want, they don't really mean that. They want, if you're friends with them, stay away from everyone over there and vice versa. But like, that's not how this goes. They, and, and, and so they're not going to need it. Like, so you have some people on the show, like a Mary, 
um, Angie and like um, even Bronwyn to a certain extent, they're not going to do that. And um, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, so then they're going back and forth by there. I mean, Bronwyn and Angie and Angie, when she claps back at her, she's like, well, maybe you need to like, um, borrow one of like a Meredith's hearing aids. So you can hear me and child. Everyone was like, why would you say that? Cause that was offensive. And everyone was just like, oh, wow. And that is, that is a thing about Angie. Angie goes to hell when she get when she claps back. <laughs> Well, it's just like, whoa. And so now Meredith's offended at Angie and still mad at her because he, Meredith holds grudges anyway. And I love that even um, Whitney said that about, you know, how um, when Meredith and Mary were originally going back and forth at this moment, she's like, oh, she's not going to let go. And she's like, you're not going to let any of this stuff go because Meredith is that type. And we see on the after show, she was bringing up her grievances all the way from when she first met Mary. Like she's one of them. Like she holds on to grudges. Like she doesn't let anything go. And even um, Whitney said the same thing. But long story less long, this whole entire event was a whole entire flop. And they just ended up because after the arguments back and forth happened, they just all decided to go their separate cars. And now you have all these women who were in a better place they weren't really in the best of places, but they were at least in a better place before this event. And now they're even in a worse place than they were before. And I can't tell if Heather actually feels bad about it or not. I feel like she's a little bit Ashley Darby-ish where she's kind of like, because at the end of the day, can someone please tell me what Heather's storyline is and how they've shown her face and this is like her thing. And we, she, we ain't even been in her house. What is going on with her? We don't know. She's in everyone else's business but, but her own. Anyway, moving on. All right. So then next, um, we have um, Meredith's event. And I'll be honest, I almost fast forward through this because I don't care. But I did not. So Brittany shows up with Jared. So Jared gets more airtime. And I, that also made me want to fast forward, but I didn't do it. And Bronwyn is there with Todd. And Heather's there by herself. And um, then we have Lisa there with John. And I think that's pretty much everybody, really. Because, like, Meredith isn't really cool with anyone else on the cast right now. And so they're doing the dinner, the, the bar mitzvah, wherever it is. And um, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but like, I just know that I'm sorry, but I don't believe anything that Meredith does. I feel like everything's for the show. And so I don't really believe that this is really truthful. So like, I'm just kind of like not really interested in this scene, to be honest. Um, I think I've said this before, Meredith can leave in her voice because child, she's not bringing anything to the show. But anyway, so they all sit down and um, they do talk about a couple things. So one of the key things they talked about is that Lisa has been to other people's businesses, a business about getting ancestor ancestry tests before, including her husband. And um, we actually find out later on the after show more in depth that that was kind of a disaster um, because her husband didn't have any background about like her bi his biological like parents or whatever. So he meets his biological mom and then he meets like his half brother. And it turns out like that the new husband, because this was like before, and apparently um, his mom lied and did not claim that any of this stuff happened. Um, initially, once they did the DNA test and everything, but it turns out a couple hours later on that day, she confessed to the half son, like, yeah, no, um, I did have relations with someone else prior to your dad. And so he did, he did meet up with them and it turned out that was not, um, it was very intense, very, um, 
triggering because the her his half brother's um, dad basically just called just kept calling John the bastard the whole entire time, um, and so yeah, it was it was traumatic. Um, I don't know how much of that was aired in this scene because I did fast forward a little bit because, um, again, I didn't care. But then the other thing that um, did take place besides that was um, we had them, the ladies talking about what happened at the Girl Scouts thing and how much of a disaster that was. And basically, Meredith is still being a victim when it comes to a whole entire situation. And... Um, Heather's kind of holding Bronwyn, like, you know, feet in the fire when it comes to some of the drama because that was kind of, Bronwyn did do that. That was, like, not a thing that she really needed to do, but she definitely did cause some of the drama that happened. And Bronwyn said something. She's like, yeah, yeah, I could be, you know, sometimes I could be, a, I guess, I guess she called herself a see you next Tuesday. Um, and because they bleeped it. And then um, Todd was like, don't say that. And like in front of everyone, like, don't say that. So Todd's still doing the thing that like none of us like, um, being kind of overly um, involved and not in a good way. And I hate this because Heather saw it. And so she picked up on it immediately. Also, the other thing that came up too, because um, Heather finally did meet Todd, and this whole entire time, I didn't even notice this. Heather just kept calling this dude Alan as if she knows the guy. She knows nothing about him. And that's what gets me about Heather is, how are you going to try to read her about her husband when you know nothing about him? And you're all about this prenup, prenup, prenup. So she kind of made herself look stupid when she met him because she actually called him. She called him Alan. She's like, yeah, his name's actually Todd. <sighs> So that was the other takeaway that happened this scene. But other than that, didn't really care. Um, but yeah, Meredith's still being a victim. And um, Heather's still judging. And even though she has no storyline, no man, no nothing. But yeah, anyway. The final scene, which... Trigger warning. And yeah, trigger warning. And if you watch the show, if you haven't watched the show yet... Trigger warning on that final scene. I cry the whole entire time. So let's get to it. So this is the episode that um, I actually told my friends about that watch my reviews and also watch the show. Like, um, apparently they did not realize while I was talking to my friends, the people that I actually talk housewives with, they still never figured out that like, Ro like um, Robert Jr., has a problem. They thought he was on the spectrum. And I was like, no, no, that's not what it is. That's not what it is at all. And sorry. Um, I, and I'm not trying to offend anyone, but like, I could see how they maybe think he had disability of some sort, but it actually makes sense because you know, Robert Jr. has been a certain way this whole entire time the show has happened. And we find out why. So Mary does go to her room, goes to his room, and he, while still clearly high, um, he definitely is high because um, he's slurring his words and everything. He completely confesses to his drug usage, and he and he has no filter about it. Kind of similar to Mary, actually. It's kind of interesting, but I mean, that makes sense. And because Mary, you know, said, Hey, you've never lied to me before. Um, we've always been truthful with each other. Tell me what's going on. And she's like, I'm not going to judge you. Just tell me what's going on. And this, this, it was really, really hard to watch. I will say that. Um, and when I mean he confessed his drug usage, he went to detail. Um, he talked about how. I, and this is YouTube, so I can't really go into, like, different um, things he was doing. Um, but he mentions how he basically essentially takes uppers and downers and balances them out. At first, like, I mean, he takes the uppers because he likes them, but then he takes the downers so he can go sleep. And... Um, 
Also, too, I think, and this goes without being said, and this is uh, allegedly, I think Mary was kind of aware of his usage because he even mentioned something that she had, like prescription wise, that went missing. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that's what he said. Um, so that's scary. And, um, I mean, and he was going, he was talking, he wasn't just talking about the pills. He was talking about like street drugs too. Um, st street rugs as well. Um, and she's like, I, I just don't understand why, you know, it's, it's a hard seeing and apparently, and gosh, it's so true. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to get through what happened, but it's, it was an emotional scene, and um, he confesses that um he started doing it because he didn't want to. He didn't want to be here anymore. And um, the only reason why he hasn't really all the way went all the way in with that because he knows it would destroy Mary. And yeah, it was pretty sad. Um, what else? Um, it was a lot and I was triggered. I'll, I'll be honest. I was completely triggered to be honest. Um, cause, um, I've been where Robert's been before. It's not a good place. It's not a good place. Um, it's never went as extreme as, you know, Robert's situation but I did have a phase where I was doing those things. And, um, you know, I have very few close friends who are still, you know, um, they're aware of that. But I've been pretty open about it because, I mean, it's been years. Like, um, my situation happened, like, about 20 years ago. Um, <laughs> so, and it, it, it went on for, like, a year of my BS. But I, I don't know. I actually stopped because I really considered it. Um, and that scared me out of doing it. Um, so. Um, oh, the other thing that was mentioned that was shared um, was that um, he started doing these things when he was 16. And he's 21 now. And this is season five. So basically, the whole entire time this show has been on air, this is why he's always kind of been off. Because he's always been high. So. <sighs> and that's really hard because you just never know what someone's going through. And I remember when I first was watching the show, I didn't know it was that. And so I kind of thought maybe he had some type of disability or something. And come to find out, it was he has, you know, issues. Um, but not, subs you know, substance issues, substance abuse issues. And um, it's a miracle that he's still with us. And honestly, um, I hope he's doing okay. Um I really am praying for Mary when it comes to all that and for anyone that's going through that. But um, I'm hoping also that seeing was powerful to help others who are, who, are, who have those issues to have the conversations. And that was why Mary decided to do this on camera because she wanted to help others. Um, she does. She states that in the after show. She was like, I just wanted to share this with the world because you know, we all have our struggles and we're all going through things. And I mean, 
Honestly, it was one of the most heaviest things I've seen on the shows. Yet. Yeah, that was it was heavy. Very, very heavy. Um and I now I mean with context now that I'm explaining it, you get why I cried the whole entire time because I've I've never been on the other side. I've never been on Mary's side of the of it. I was on Robert's side of it when I was going through my stuff. So um I feel for him because I couldn't imagine being in that kind of place for more than a year. I was in my spot for just a year and through the grace of God, um, the universe, wherever you want to believe in, I believe in the higher power. Um, I got out of it. And it's not easy. But anyway, um, I feel bad I'm ending this episode, <laughs> ending this review in kind of a somber note, but we knew this episode was coming and it came. And now it's about what happens afterwards. Um, I'm hoping the other ladies will actually support Mary. And I'm hoping we don't have any more of this catty, stupid BS that Mary doesn't care anything about because I don't either. And even in the after show, Mary was like, this is why I don't care about half the stuff that y'all talking about. <laughs> and I was like, girl, I don't blame you. And I mean, that's why she's real. She is real. She, you know. And this is why we love Mary. Over here anyway. But anyway, that does uh, conclude the review. Um, and I, again, I do feel bad if I triggered anyone. I Definitely why I said trigger warning. Um, I will be definitely, you know, putting that. Um, yeah. It, yeah. It's a lot. Um, <laughs> and now I'm just like, I'm at loss for words because... It, again, it triggered me as well. Um, but anyway, um, but anyway, that does conclude the video. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.